Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna show you how to make this beautiful card that I think would be really nice for Mother's Day. We're using a digital stamp from my Graphico. The designer is Lemon Elf Studios. It's from the baking utensil kit, and I'll put a link below in the video description. Digital stamps are really great to use if you have an inkjet printer and you like to color with alcohol markers because the inkjet ink won't run with your alcohol markers, which is really, um, re really, really refreshing. The pattern paper I'm using is from a stack I bought oh probably two years ago and I'm not exactly sure where I got it so um, you can use whatever paper you like so what I'm gonna do here first is add some faux stitching to my paper and I've got this little scoring board any scoring board is gonna work for this this happens to be the score buddy and I'm using this little um, this little tool, it's by EK Success called the Score Bug. You can buy it from ScorePal or you can actually use the pink ones if you have the EK Success ones. And I'm pretty sure a dressmaker's wheel will work, but I haven't used it. So, you know, be careful. You don't damage your board if you do give that a try. Now, here's a tip. If you flip over your paper, if you have a dark paper with like a white core and you do it on the back side, you'll actually get a more um, standout look because it'll kind of poke that white paper through and it will look a lot more prominent. So it's completely up to you what you do. I like that um, this board has different kind of margins so or spaces between the score lines so I can kind of, um, you know, use it to line my stitches up. Now, if I run my fingernails across, it's going to make the stitches show up a little bit more. And then if you want some more, um, you know, some more definition, you can go over it with a pen. Now I'm using this little distressing tool. I got this like probably, I don't know, eight years ago. It's a Heidi Swap distressor, just to scratch up the edges and make it look a little worn and shabby chic. You could use the edge of a scissor blade or your fingernail or whatever you want to do this. You don't have to have this special tool, but if you do, it's awfully handy. I wanted to have a custom mat for this uh, image, but my little um, bracket die cut here was not tall enough and it really wasn't quite wide enough. So I thought I would kind of alter it myself and um, make my own custom shape. So what I did was I just set my image where I wanted it on my paper. And then I'm just gonna use a white colored pencil to trace that bracket shape on the bottom. Now, if my paper was a little bit narrower, I could actually slide it through the middle of the die and just cut off that bottom edge, but it was just a touch too wide for that. Now, all I have to do is cut that out with my scissors and I have a custom mat. If you don't have a die cut, don't worry. You can print off a shape from the computer or you could use any stencil to do this exact same technique. So use what you have and make the most of your supplies. I added stitching to the border of this mat as well. And I wanted to show you how to do this if you didn't have a scoring board or if you had to do a freehand size or shape, just simply use a mouse pad or a piece of fun foam. And you can either use a pin to poke the holes or use that same little um, cutter bee wheel to go around and do the holes. And to make them stand out a little bit more, I'm just taking a black pen and tracing my lines. And feel free to use a ruler if you're not comfortable doing this freehand. Now we can glue our image onto our mat and get ready to color. The paper I'm using here is not my favorite for coloring. I was experimenting and I was hoping that it was going to blend as easily as the Nina paper I order online. This is the Nina paper I picked up at Target and I've noticed they have it at Walmart too, but it is, it is not as blendable as the classic crest that um, most of us stampers have been used to. But then I thought this may be a really good opportunity to show you how to blend when you have paper that doesn't really wanna cooperate because not everybody has access to the um, really nice blending card. So to kind of get over this limitation, I am coloring first the um, the stand mixer with my lightest color, which is kind of a really light green pro marker. Now you're going to notice that um, I started off with the flat wide end because I want to keep that paper wet as long as I can. So I want to cover as much ground as quickly as possible. Then I'm going in with a fine tip and just kind of getting into the edges. I'm using different brands of markers here. I'm going to use um, the mid range is a Copic. I believe it is aqua is the name of the color. And um, I'm going in that next right on top of the wet ink because it's gonna help everything stay wet and help it blend. Now, one thing you wanna watch out for when you're doing this technique is that you're really saturating the paper. So it might want to feather um, out past the line. So you might just wanna stay a hair in. If you can notice that I'm doing that right there, I'm just staying a hair within the line so it doesn't bleed out on me. I'm going around the edges and in any areas where I think there might be a shadow. 
Now I'm going back into that lighter color that I used originally and I'm coloring forcefully over that um, medium range color I just put in to kind of force it to blend towards the center a little bit. Um, I like to use a chisel edge for this because I feel like I get a more firmer blend plus I can work a little quickly and um, cover more area. Now I'm feathering in a little bit more with that medium range and in, right into the wet ink so I'm just kind of like kind of flicking in a little color just to kind of fill it in a little bit. I still feel like the edges and the middle are a little harsh and I just wanted to get a little bit more of a subtler blend than a really, um, you know, contrasty aggressive one. I feel like I need a darker value so I'm going in with this darker uh, Prisma color marker and adding some of those darker colors into the shadow areas such as um, at the bottoms of all the darker greens under the bowl where it would be casting a shadow and um, at the bottom of the mixer itself. Now I can go pretty close to the edge on this one because this is going to be my darkest value. I'm just trying to sketch in where I think I would have the most shadows. And now we're going to go back in with that medium value right along, um, right over the top of our darkest marker and right over the edge of it to soften those lines down. Do that against any of the darkest green lines. And now use your lightest shade of marker again to go in there and kind of push the ink around and add some highlights. The lighter color markers that have more alcohol versus pigment will actually act almost like an eraser so you can kind of like get back to the white of the paper. Then go up to the top part of the mixer that we didn't color yet, go back in with the same three markers uh, the same way we did before and complete the rest of the green coloring. Now let's color the mixing bowl. I'm starting off with a very light shade of kind of like a dusty rose pink uh, pro marker and I'm coloring in most of the bowl. I don't want to go right out to the edge because again this uh, paper wants to feather a bit. Now I have I believe it's ballet pink prisma color and I'm going kind of right next to it right up near the edges just to give it that second kind of um, value of pink and then I've got this nice pink tria marker which is a little bit darker still and I'm going right up to the edge and I'm also going to do the um, underneath part of the bowl and the inside so this is going to give us a really nice kind of roundness to it how it's like lighter in the center it makes it feel nice and round you also want to use that darker color on the inside of your mixing bowl too. Uh, that'll make it look like, you know, it really is set a little bit further back and it'll give you the nice depth and dimension you'll want with your uh, colored image. Now simply just go back over your different values of pink with the lightest pink color to blend. This is a really easy, uh, easy part of the image here. And uh, keep in mind that the more you get used to, with, to a certain type of paper or cardstock, no matter what kind it is, once you get used to it, it's going to really make it quick and easy for you to blend. I'm adding a little bit of the um, medium value pink just to smooth it out. And look at that, we've got a really nice three-dimensional look with our bowl there. Um, there's some silver elements on this mixer so I'm just going to use a couple different shades of gray to um, fill them in. I'll use like a 70% gray which is what I have right there I believe. Yep for the shadows they're right like at the top of the beaters there that are being shadowed by the top of the mixer and also on the inside of the switch and the bottom of other silver elements. And then I'm simply going to go in with some 20% gray and 30% gray to um, add shadows underneath the mixer and to fill in the rest of the silver components. I like to use a clear blending marker whenever I want to soften out a shadow at the bottom. You can see there I'm just kind of going over the edge of my gray shadow underneath to give it more of a natural um, kind of blend out. I felt like my coloring job needed a little something extra so I grabbed a white color pencil and just decided to go in and add some highlights to both the bowl and the mixer. If you ever end up in a situation where you're not happy with your coloring job and you feel like the colors look too flat, grab your colored pencils and go on top. It really makes a big difference and you can pretty much save any coloring job that you've done that you think you may have overworked or underworked or you just can't seem to get it right. The colored pencils are amazing for this. Now let's start putting that card together. I'm taking a little of this pretty aqua baker's twine and I'm wrapping it around my panel. This of course is my favorite baker's twine from Paper Mart. I love that stuff. And I am simply just going to tie it on and leave enough extra so that I can tie a bow on. 
I decided to add that peach button before I put this, before I tied the bow, just to give it a little pop of color and um, then just trim your ends. Another thing I like to do if I have a button like that, because it wants to wibble and wobble, wibble and wobble. Yes, it wants to wibble and wobble. I'll put a little dab of hot glue or a glue dot behind there just to anchor it down. That also will keep the um, glue from the string the twine there from sliding around too much which is nice i really love this teal color so i thought a couple more uh, buttons as embellishments would really set it off and i've got a really fun trick to share with you and i've shared this before but i know some of you guys are new i'm going to cut a little sliver of white cardstock or you could use whatever scrap paper you have on your table i mean honestly it's just like a little scrap and then i'm going to thread that through the buttonholes it looks just like string when you're done, but you don't need to thread a needle. You don't need to, you know, fuss with the ends of string to get it through the holes. It's so easy. And it's like one of my favorite tips. I think that tip came from Aaron Lincoln. I'm not 100% sure, but I just, I just love it. It makes so much, um, so much quick work of getting that threaded button look. Now a little adhesive on the back of this panel and I can put it onto my prepared card base. You know, the paper that we had faux stitched earlier. You know, I think that might have been another tip from Erin Lincoln. Gosh, you gotta love her. She doesn't know that I exist, but she's really clever, I gotta say. <laughs> I'm gonna glue these little buttons down with a little bit of hot glue, just kind of snip off that extra um, extra paper string stuff before I stick it down. And um, that's pretty much gonna do it for the card. It's so easy and fun. And one of the things I like to do with digital stamps is I will print off a sheet of them. And then um, I'll have them maybe upstairs on the coffee table and I'll color them in while I'm watching TV. And then when I'm ready to make cards, I have a bunch of images all ready to go. Again, I'll put the link below in the video description so you can find the digital stamps that I used. And um, check out all the digital stamps at my Graphico. The girls there are so talented. Um, I have a shop there too where I've painting tutorials and other digital craft supplies if you want to check that out. And um, I do appreciate you checking that out. And a little ink on the edges and our card is done. I want to thank you so much for watching today please give me a thumbs up and subscribe and until next time happy crafting